Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. I bet none of you guys have this problem. Well, I bet none of you guys have both of these problems that I have right now. One of them is that I live in an RV full time. And so things get moved around and bumped and knocked over all the time. The other one is that I do a lot of portable operating. Both of those two things contribute to attack surface. Lots of opportunity for my radios to get damaged and they get damaged. The problem I think that you guys might be able to empathize with me a little bit on is fixing broken radios. And it's something that I love to do and it's a cool part of the hobby for me, but sometimes it's hard to find the parts. Let me show you what's broken. Let's find the parts and let's get it fixed. So I try really hard to put all of my radios in these ammo boxes and then they're on this shelf and the shelf has this little lip that stops them from coming out. But this one, I think I must have left it out on a travel day. This is my Yezu FT, oh, it's upside down. Sorry to offend you all. This is my Yezu FT8800 radio. And this one came from my good friend, Bill, KK4PAL, from the Ham Radio Unleashed YouTube channel. Sorry, Bill, I dropped it. One of these knobs works fine. The other knob works good. That knob works good. That knob works good. But this one here doesn't work at all anymore. And it's actually a two-part knob. So like the outside should be moving as well as the inside and I can't get it to move. But it looks like it might be a pretty straightforward, easy repair because this is one of those radios that has a separation unit. The rest of the radio works fine. It's just the knob that doesn't. And that, you know, this is a, this is a dual, a dual radio. Yeah, see that one moves nice and easy. And that one moves nice and easy. And that one only moves that far. And that one moves the same knob at the same time. So we're gonna get this thing open and figure it out. But first I got to figure out what this part is. And that brings me to the trick that I want to share with y'all today. AI has taken over the world and we're ham radio ops and we are the leading edge of technology. <laughs> okay, I would like for us to be the leading edge of technology. So here I am going to show you how to use AI in order to find the parts that you need. All right, so here is the package that I got. There is the rotary encoder itself. And there are a two pack of knobs. Let's take a look at the encoder. And I actually did a repair very similar to this on my Yezu FT891 and there they called it a VR unit. Okay, so the outside moves and the inside moves. Okay, so both parts are, are good there. Feels a little, a little metallic, but this thing here is old and might be a little a little better worn in than this. But this is this is good, this is doing the thing. And then you can see all of the pins there. So we might need to do some soldering, I don't know yet. On the FT891, I thought we were gonna do some soldering, but I think if, I, if my memory serves me correctly, I think that it um, did not need soldering. I think it was just a snap-in ribbon cable type deal. But I can solder. Okay, how do the knobs look? They gave us three knobs, so they don't have the little white indicator of where they are, but I can I can ignore that or not. I mean, I, I don't actually use that white indicator for any particular reason, but it is there. And then do they look similar enough? They look very similar. They're, they are different, but they look similar enough. And they're actually a little bit taller, but I have a complete set of knobs. They, they even gave me this, this upper knob up here. So if I wanted to get super, Maybe it's that. Okay, did I do that wrong? Ah, I did do that wrong. Okay, so they gave me the upper knob, which matches 100%. That's actually a really good match. And then I, I picked the wrong top knob. This is the actual top knob that goes with it. And that is also, there you go, there are the knobs that were sent, and there are the bottom knobs for comparison. That looks pretty good, perfect. So I do have a spare set of knobs. So I got one complete set for the left and one complete set for the right. Time to dive in, get out my desktop screwdriver set. What are we looking at here? We're looking at Phillips. Those are probably number ones. Do not install in front of a heater vent or exposed to direct sunlight. I don't I, I don't see anything that says don't open this up. Warranty void if opened. It wouldn't matter. This thing's so far out of warranty anyway. Long screw on the bottom, same size screw on top. Okay, do we have all four? Similar size screws. Yep. Last chance, last chance to go crazy. All screws are the same size. Perfect. What is holding it in place? Nothing is holding us in place. Okay, so there's a ribbon cable that goes to the microphone connector board. 
be careful when you're opening this up. It did sound kind of violent and look pretty bad, but I let the tension go immediately so that I didn't damage this ribbon cable here. These twist tabs here are most likely holding on the display. That looks like a custom Yezu chip there. That's pretty cool. So how do we get this out? We're going to take the knobs off. Well, these do not want to come off. And this here is a ribbon cable, and I don't know the name of it, but this, this should flip up. There we go. That flips up, and that cable comes out. So now I'm not going to cause any damage to that cable. And putting it back in is the opposite. Put it in and then lower the, the latch down in order to hold it in place. Let me get a prying screwdriver bit. We'll leave that bit out. This one here has a little bit of a curve to it. And that might help us pry these knobs off. The one knob came off easy. Knob number two comes off easy. We'll put the, the old knobs on the right-hand side of the workbench. Oh, that just popped right, right out the back there. Okay, so those units, this, this part here looks like it's attached to that ribbon cable. We're not done yet. We're still learning. And I'm just being extremely gentle. I always tell people, you can always add more force, but it is harder to take away too much force than it is to have not added enough force in the first place. Yeah, so we're moving. Okay, so I was right. Those are connected there. And that is a little mini circuit board. There we go. One, two. This one here is the one that's broken. So what am I going to be able to do to get this one off? It's moving. All the way. Okay, so this one is still fused together even after taking it apart. And you can see the knob there. The outer one tw twists just fine. The inner one twists just fine. So it's something wrong with the knob. I might be able to get away with not replacing this part. Put that in my drawer full of spares because now it's turning just fine. And I would rather continue to use original factory parts for everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this thing back together in a on the workbench kind of way and verify that it's working. And if it is, then we'll put the knobs on it and we'll call this one good and I'll have a spare part. There are some holes in there. That those don't look like good holes either. I wonder why those holes are there. Do you have an 8800? Does it have these four holes in it? Battle scars, maybe. Workbench power. All right. All right, squelch knob works. And of course, you guys couldn't see that. We got it on squelch. And then that's volume. All right, that knob works perfectly. And that knob works perfectly. Excellent. Unplug it. So I just saved myself a ton of time in this repair. So now we can put this thing all the way back together. That, that did not have a satisfying snap click shut to it. Okay, fine. Because we screw it shut anyway. And if you guys really want to see me solder something, I have plenty of other videos on the channel of me soldering things. We've even done some live streams on it. For these screws, you're screwing metal into plastic. So a good tip for you, if you don't already know this, is to take this and turn it backwards a bit, and you'll, you'll hear a little click as the teeth set, the teeth of the screw set into the groove that is in the plastic, the already existing groove. And there's no reason to put these things down super tight because you'll just wind up splitting the plastic. So that's why you'll see me spin backwards a bit when I'm starting screws. I want to get them in the existing threads. Okay, that's good. Put this back on the body of the radio. All right, that's back on. And now we can put our knobs back on. So I'm going to take the knobs that were already on the right and continue to use them. Okay, that still turns good. That turns good. That turns good. It pushes. It pushes. I didn't test the push functionality, but we're this far in. We might as well go all the way. And then I'm going to take the 
original knob from Yezu for the upper rotary encoder, and the new knobs from eBay for the lower. That spins good. Oh, this one's tight. It goes on. But it's a little tighter than I'd want it to be. How does it go on to the replacement knob? Same thing. It's tight on the replacement knob. So what the heck happened to these guys? Let's see if I can get these separated without too much damage. This is the Yezu knob. And this is the Yezu knob. Are there differences in height? Are there differences in depth? Mm, they look fine to me. All right, well, I didn't get to use those knobs. The outer knob fit on just fine. Okay, that's the original Yezu knob back on there. And they, they spin independently of each other, no problem. And one doesn't make the other one spin. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And then how does the other knob that we got from eBay work? Same thing, it doesn't go on all the way. Okay, so the eBay knobs were a bust. The part I can't tell you about because we didn't use it, we are back up and running. Let me check that push button functionality because I didn't know that had push button functionality. Okay, so this one here, this one over here should be power. That turns it off, perfect. That turns it back on, perfect. And then this one over here, I think is wires X mode. Off, point, off. This is the knob we didn't repair. So this one already works just fine. Off, awesome. We are in business. All right, so I really don't even know what to make of this. I was really excited that ChatGPT was able to give me the answers as to what parts do we need? What are the, the necessary things in order to get this fixed? And I don't know if that rotary encoder works or not. However, we do know that those knobs don't work. And I don't know that it's ChatGPT's fault. ChatGPT did the same thing that you would have done. It just did it faster. It went to eBay. It searched for the parts in question and it found them. It's technically a fail on the seller's part because the eBay listing did say that these were the right knobs for the job. Get your projects fixed and if they don't work, return them. I'm, I'm probably out like 10 bucks, whatever the number is. So I'm not, I'm not crying, but I wanted a little bit more. I wanted something a little bit more exciting and to share with y'all and a big win. And what we got was a repaired radio, which is, you know, a pretty big win. There is a video right over here I think you might enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.